Okay, we're back uh, here with the podcast, and I just what we're going to do here is kind of try and set up some uh, simple Mendelian genetics problems. Okay, and so I basically give you information, and you have to basically kind of sort sift through the information to set up the problem. So this is going to take it in a little more detail. I'm not spoon feeding you the information with my big spoon. Okay, I'm giving you a little tidbits, and you have to basically kind of work through it almost like a math problem. All right, so I'm expecting that you know what the vocabulary terms mean. If I say somebody's heterozygous, that you know what that means. If I say somebody's homozygous, you know what that means. If I say that an allele is dominant or recessive, that you know what that means. Okay, so we're past uh, the babying you part. This is, hey, can you work through these problems? So example. Here's an example problem, we'll work through this together and then I expect that you could be able to go through the rest of um, some similar problems and work through those. Okay, we say if a, if a uh, blue-eyed woman had children with a heterozygous brown-eyed man, okay? So we're basically dealing with two alleles, blue, brown. Alright, blue and brown. So, in this case, what we have to do is kind of sort through the information. I told you, if a blue-eyed woman had children with a heterozygous brown-eyed man, there are two things that should click in your brain here. First of all, I told you that the man is heterozygous. Okay? So this is basically, we'll just kind of say, this is a male with the male symbol, okay? And he is heterozygous. Now we're using blue and brown eyes. So let's use big B or little b, okay? So brown, this man is heterozygous. So he's big B, little b. Okay, it says a blue-eyed woman. Now let's not write anything down for her yet. We have to sort through the information that it gave us. It told us that this man is heterozygous. Okay, heterozygous. And so I can learn two things from that. I'm going to draw in the Punnett square already too. He's heterozygous and his eyes are still brown. Okay, so we know now by looking at this that basically big B is brown eye allele and little b has to be blue because he's heterozygous. So he has one copy of each allele and he has brown eyes. So brown is dominant. Your brain should click and tell you that, oh, brown's dominant because he's heterozygous and he still has brown eyes. So the female, okay, she must be little b, little b. Okay, little b is recessive to brown, which is big B, and little b codes for blue eyes. So she has two copies of that, and it makes her blue eyed. Okay, so we write her in here. Okay, so then we can do the cross. So when we do the cross, all right, I'll just write it all in with blue. The first probable outcome is big B, little b. Second is also big B, little b. Okay? These two offspring on this side, we would expect to be little b, little b. Now, okay, the question, we could ask a multitude of questions from this one problem. Okay? We could ask the question, um, what is the chance of having blue-eyed offspring? Okay, so from this cross, this woman who is homozygous recessive for blue eyes, and this man who is heterozygous for brown eyes, okay, we have those two phenotypes, what percentage of the offspring would have blue eyes? So I have to come over here knowing the genotype of blue eyes, and it would be that child, and that child. They have a 50% chance of having blue-eyed offspring. So for that question, what is the probability of having blue-eyed offspring? 50%. Two of these four in the Punnett square. Okay? We could ask another question. We could say, list the possible genotypes of the offspring. Okay? So if we said that, the possible genotypes of the offspring, we'd look at our Punnett square. What possible genotypes do we have? Well, only big B, little b, and little b, little b, in a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every one big B, little b offspring I have, I would expect to also have one blue-eyed little b, little b offspring. 
Okay. Now, if we said, what are the possible phenotypes? What are the possible phenotypes of the offspring? Now remember, phenotype means the actual trait that I observed. What color are the eyes? I have a probability of having 50% brown-eyed offspring and 50% blue-eyed offspring. So my possible phenotypes are for every one brown, I would expect to have one blue. So those are an example of some of the questions we could ask from that simple problem, okay? Setting up a problem like this from the information I gave you, you were able to determine the dominance versus recessiveness, okay? the genotypes of the parents because it told you which one was heterozygous, etc. Okay? Hopefully you can work through the rest of the problems that you would have to do on simple, um, basically simple inheritance like this. Okay? Laters.